Hey, good morning. Welcome, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us um, today and for the first time. That's really exciting. I have a whole bunch of stuff to share with you today. Um, I have a haul from a, an estate sale that I went to, actually two estate sales from this past weekend. I have something that I purchased at Goodwill to share with you. And um, I have five items that I'm going to sell. Oh, I'm also going to do a little sneak peek of what's going to come up um, tomorrow night in my live sale. And you guys can pick some stuff from today's sale um, for tomorrow night's sale, too. And actually, I think I'm going to even have you guys um, pick something from here to add to my five items this morning. So you get to, it's going to be a little interactive a little interactive broadcast today. Anyway, so this past weekend, um, I went out on, um, well, first of all, it was a crazy weekend. Those of you that bought stuff from me last week on Wednesday know it took me a little while to get my invoices out this time around. And that's because, um, yeah, I don't want a spoiler alert. <laughs> We had some stuff. Uh, well, I mentioned it in the video. All right, not too much of a spoiler, but my dad's house sold. So um, there was a lot of last minute things that I had to take care of this past weekend, and including some paperwork and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And my dad's home is about 45 minutes away from my home. So, um, yeah, I had to I had to do some running around. So I had that going on and then um, some other stuff at home. And then I went, well, Sunday, I kind of was for me. But Saturday, I was going to come. Everything's at the studio for everything's at the studio. <laughs> and my husband and I are down to one car, which actually works out okay for us because he's working from home. So it hasn't really been too big of a deal. But... Um, what it meant was Saturday I had wanted to come into the studio to package and get invoices out and he needed the car. So um, I didn't do it, <laughs> but you know, Hey, it, it all gets done. It all gets out. So um, those of you that purchased from me last week, your invoices went out yesterday and um, I will have everything ready label slapped on anybody who's paid and we'll get them all shipped out tomorrow. So thank you for that. Um, what else was I going to tell you? I don't know. Hey, Mary Jo, thanks for coming. Um, so yeah, so that's what was going on this weekend. But Sunday, I went to a few estate sales. And I went on the last day. So I got, got a bit of a bargain, which was always always fun. It's been a while. And it's been a while since I've been to one where I've been able to buy a whole bunch of stuff and been excited about um, picking it up. I've, I think I've, well, I think, I know I've mentioned it a number of times here in my videos that um, at least since the first of the year, estate sales around here have been very hit or miss. And usually I can expect, um, normally, before all this craziness, well, even last year, I can expect that 75% of them are going to be reasonably good, and then 25% of them um, duds. <laughs> but this, this year, since January, that's kind of flipped. So I'm lucky if I can go to three or four of them and pick up five or six items that, that are, you know, good. And, and you know, anyway. Um. Oh, hi, Sue. I didn't see you jump in here. And look, good morning, Lynn. Um, so anyway, so what I'm doing this morning, those of you that are just jumping in, um, I have a haul from a couple of those estate sales, um, something I purchased at Goodwill. Then I think I'm going to do it right around 1030. I'm going to do my little five item sale. Um, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to pick something out of what I show and um, how do I get to them? <laughs> Pretty easy. I just go. <laughs> um, in this, we're, I'm in the state of Ohio, and while we have, you know, advisories and stuff out, we're still basically living life, um, which I'm very grateful for. 
there are precautions. Um, most estate sale companies limit, well, they all do. They limit the number going into the um, house. There are some that are a little more stringent than others, but um, they all do. And they require masks inside the house. So I am perfectly comfortable with that most times. Um, there are times when I have to back out of a room because there's too many people in the room or I have to, you know, like put my stuff down and go away so that I can not be in a line waiting for checkout inside. Now, the last few I've gone to, the weather's been really nice. So they've had all the windows open. So you get a lot of ventilation. And um, so that's really helpful, too. Um, so, yeah, it's really nice. I'm very grateful for that. And um, anyway, um, yeah. Well, I'm so excited. Yeah, Stephanie's new. So welcome, Stephanie. And you guys all make her feel welcome in the um, chat. That's awesome. So anyway, let me jump in so that I can actually have some things that you guys can pick from. Um, if, you know, you want me to, I'm going to, I'm going to have you guys um, give you the opportunity to pick some stuff for tomorrow night and also to pick one item that I will do today um, when I sell stuff a little bit later. Anyway, so <clears throat> let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to show you my Goodwill purchase first since there's only one of them. Um, there were a number of different things on the Goodwill shelf that I went to that I thought were okay. I mean, nice. They were vintage. They were kind of cool. Um, but they were just at a little price point that was a little bit higher than I wanted to pay for resale and nothing that I was going to pick up for me. Um, so I left most of them there. But this one, I thought this one was really cute. And in my research that I did on it, I've discovered that I'm pretty sure that it is. Um, oh, now the name's going to escape my, because it's the other. Morton. <laughs> I kept thinking McCoy, and I know it's not McCoy. Morton. M, M for Morton. Um, anyway, so it's this cute little deer planter. Um, this little deer face is is. A little interesting. There's nothing wrong with him. There's no chips, no cracks, no anything. But his little face, he has like a, his little noses. I don't even know how to explain it. He's got a big grin. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> he is cute. He does remind me of Bambi. So I picked this up at Goodwill. And this will be for sale. So that's something that you guys can choose from. And, um, <clears throat> anyway, so then I went to the, I have stuff from two additional um, estate sales that I'll show you. And I'll show you my favorite estate sale company first because there's more stuff for you guys to pick from at, from this estate sale. And then I'm trying to think, actually I think I have three estate sales represented here. And I'm not sure which, I, I know which ones came from the one. Anyway, okay. So in the basement of my favorite estate sale company, I found this lovely plate. And I love this scene. This is the scene of Jesus at the door knocking. And I knew yesterday, I thought, you should write that, that verse down because you'll forget it if you try to say it. But it's the one where I stand at the door and knock, and if any man lets me, you know, opens the door, I will come in. Um, and it's just, it's just beautiful. It's a wonderful sentiment. So um, it is made in Japan. It has 18 karat gold trim uh, made by Mid-State Products Company. And it was made after zip codes, so I don't know when exactly that was but I still think it's very pretty beautiful and great shape no chips or cracks or anything the gold is all you know in really nice condition and then it has a mate although I will sell them separately um, at least I think I'll sell them separately because somebody might want one over the other one but the mate is the last supper so I thought those were pretty good well hey Sharon good morning and then this one doesn't have quite as much information on the back, but it is also made in Japan. <laughs> they put fishing wire on this one to hold it. I don't know what's on the other one, but they're, you know, they're decorative plates. You can hang them on the wall. So those will both be available. 
And those of you just popping in, I, I'm going to show you some stuff from my estate sales. I'm going to do my five item sale at 1030. And then, um, but you can pick something out of these things that I tell you are available if you would like. All right, this one is not available, <laughs> but I'm going to show it to you anyway, because it's pretty cool. Very, very cool. So um, on the table was this thing that I thought was very different. I'm like, ooh, and I picked it up and grabbed it immediately. And it says, to my darling, and there's something inside. I'll show you this something inside in a second. So that's it without the thing inside. But then after I turned it over later, I discovered that it's a postcard. Isn't that neat? So there's some bins in this and stuff, but it's, you know, it's vintage. But anyway, in, tucked inside was this little card. And on the back, it says, a souvenir from France from some, um, something Sweetheart Ray, September 18, 1918. I'll show you the thing, but my phone never likes to focus. But that's what it says on the back. So I thought that was cute. This is staying with me um, at least until I research what something, because I've never seen anything like this until I research that. But I like this kind of oddball um, pieces of ephemera. Um, but this is available. I picked this up. This is a cute little, look at that. Doesn't that scream 70s to you? It's a little jewelry box. I haven't cleaned anything up that I picked up at these sales, by the way. I don't know if this will clean up or not. It's, I mean, it's pretty clean, but it's still got, you know, on the outside it has some little areas. But this is really cute. So I picked this up. And it, it closes like it's supposed to. There's no key with it. Well, I thought it might pop open, but it doesn't. It opens back up again, but I had to have two hands. So that'll be available. Good morning, Judy. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll save until maybe about 1025, and then we can ask what you guys want me to throw in my five item today. Um, I also, well, yeah, I'll show you these. I tend to avoid, even though I love them, I avoid linens because so far I haven't had very good luck selling the linens here on my channel. Um, maybe that'll change. I mean, it dep all depends on who's there. Good morning, Belinda. But I use vintage linens in my artwork, so I do still look at them for that reason. And these, I have a set of one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And I picked these up because they had a really pretty patina on them. Um, they're not all identical, but they're very similar. And I like to use those when I do um, fabric journals or junk journals. I like to put those in there. So I got those, and then I got a larger one as well. So I'll hang on to those. Um, this guy will be available. You weren't feeling well, Belinda? I Thanks for coming. I hope you're feeling better. I don't know what's going on. Um, isn't this cute? Look at this guy. Look at him. <laughs> Look at his hair. Oh, love it. So cute. Happy birthday. He's got his little hair. It's like a, like a, like fur. So it was like fur that was glued on to his head. He's in good condition. He has a little bit of a, like a color. Actually, I think that's sticky. Like I said, I haven't cleaned anything up, so I'm, I'm betting that'll come off. And then, um, you no, know, he had a price tag on the bottom that wasn't from the sale, but I'm going to try to see if I can get that off. Yeah. So that's the bottom, not marked, but I'm like, I, this screams, 60s, 70s, right? Yeah, cute. So this will be one that you guys can choose from if you'd like. Um, again, we're picking one item for today, and then um, you guys can pick things that you want me to put in the sale tomorrow night. Oh, let me tell you. So tomorrow night is going to be really exciting. I have a guest coming to sell. I don't know if you're familiar with Antiques from Karen. Um, I don't know if I can add... 
let me add it here. I'm going to add it over to the side so you guys can see. And I think that this is the way her channel is completely written. Um, I think her name is in the channel name. So if you want to look for her, you can find her. And I think I left in my last morning live. I might have left her um, thing afterwards in the her link <laughs> in the description. Oh, Belinda. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I hope they get that figured out. I hope you feel better. All right, I typically tend to stay away from um, music boxes because I have issues with the mechanism. Like I, I don't, I'm always worried that the mechanism is not going to be good. But this one is a beautiful music box. I'm trying to read what it says. Um, something import. <sighs> Can't read it. I'd have to take a picture. Something Imports Incorporated Japan. So it is made in Japan. It's this beautiful dancing couple. Like I said, most things need a good cleaning. There's a little bit of paint loss on his shoulder. But other than that, there's nothing else going on. And he does, they do work. And I think they dance to Somewhere My Love or Somewhere, you know, whatever that is. You guys know. Um, it's, com it's a common thing. But this is very pretty. Did I bring? I do have my ruler. It's going to play for a while for us. <laughs> um, it is about seven and three quarters inches tall. So that's, that's an option for you for today and tomorrow. This I picked up. Because I often channel Karina from Tarnished Treasures. <laughs> if you don't know her channel, you got to check that one out, too. Um, be doing some name dropping today. Anyway, Karina likes silver. Wow, she's a silver magnet. If you've ever watched her, she just silver sterling gravitates. You know, she finds it everywhere. But I got this because they thought it was something. It was off to the side and priced higher. It's very tarnished. I saw no hallmarks, but I've discovered from Karina that often a good uh, polish will reveal hallmarks. So I got it because, and even if it isn't sterling, the, the pattern on this, this floral pattern is stunning. I just love it. Um, you see it on the base, the floral pattern, Laura, Laura's theme, cool. Thank you for that, Mary Jo. Anyway, there was just one, unfortunately. That's the bottom. Um, this is not available just yet because I have to discover if it's sterling. It probably will go in a sale at some point um, because because I try to keep everything. <laughs> keep everything. <laughs> um, hi, Simon says. Anyway, so that's. You know, that's the thing. So in the basement also, let's show you these from the basement. I dug around in a Christmas box, and there really wasn't a whole lot of vintage Christmas in there. But I did find these. Look at, there's three of them. I'll show them all to you. And the what's it called? glitter is so perfectly done. <laughs> that I don't think that it's it's handcrafted. And the reason why it, I there was a possibility that it might be is because I think that this image looks like a decal. But definitely by the top, you can tell that it's vintage. Look at this Santa. Isn't he cute? And then there's, like I said, there's a third one. And it's got the purple. So we got blue, green, and purple. Found those. Those will be available. Then I found this. This is a creamer, I believe. Although you could use it for a gravy boat. Because um, I know my 
it's just my husband and I, we don't use a whole lot of gravy. It's in really nice condition. It does have a hairline crack right there on both sides. Um, I picked it up with not intending to sell it. I'll just tell you that. I picked it up because I love the colors on it. Here's what it is on the bottom. I think it says Johnson Brothers, England. Um, English Chippendale, Johnson Brothers, England. Um, because I thought it would be a really nice base for an assemblage piece. So that's why I picked that up. Um, but who knows, I might, I might end up selling it. But for right now, it's, I plan to keep it. All right. Put those aside. All right, so I love this. It's dirty as I'll get out. Please keep in, keep in mind, I did not clean anything. And I actually don't really have the space here at the studio to clean it, so I would have to take it home and wash it in my sink. And I know this from experience. I had was going to sell something in one of my live sales and I took it into the bathroom here to clean it and I broke it because there's not enough room. Anyway, this beautiful planter, look at her. She's Relpo and she's absolutely gorgeous. Look at her big her pantaloons. She's a big one too. She's pretty big. Here's her Relpo sticker on the bottom. Love her. She got her little purse. She, of course, I'm assuming nothing's hidden under the shirt. <laughs> She's in great condition. I mean, excellent condition. I don't even see any crazing on her. Um, it does not appear that anything has been repaired on her. And she doesn't even seem to have any um, missing paint. Yeah, she's awesome. So she'll be available. And then, all right, I'm looking at my time. Excuse me. These lovely ladies also scream 70s. And these would have been from um, kits that you could have bought for uh, crafting. One of the big craft manufacturers of the time was Hirschner's. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Hirschner's, but they used to sell all kinds of fun little craft kits. So she would have been one. I'm gonna sell these together as a, as a lot, the two of them. And then there's her, look at her little face, with all the sequins. And she's a bit dusty. Actually, they're both, I mean, they're old. <laughs> they're just really old and awesome. But look at the chenille pipe cleaner arms on her and little flowers. She's got earrings in her ears. And then I'm not sure what that was from. She might have been on a stick, you know, like they do the little stakes. But these will be available, and they'll be available as a pair. All right, I can show you one more thing that we can pick from um, for the five-item sale. All right. So I picked up these beautiful Christmas angels. These are Home Co. So I've got two angels. They don't appear to have any damage to them at all. In great condition. The uh, homeowners had them glued to something. I don't know if you can see the glue on the bottom. But there's their label. Here's the other one. So that one was playing more like a, a lyre. And this one is playing like a violin. And again, there's glue on the bottom. They were glued to something. But very sweet. So they will be sold as a set. Okay, and they are available. All right, friends, so out of those items that I showed you just now, you all can pick what you would like to add one thing to the five item sale today. So let me know if there's anything out of those things that you want me to add, and I will add those, that one, or if it was a pair that I was selling together, I could choose that. And then I will get started with that.
Sharon says the jewelry box. Do I have any other? <laughs> Sharon says the jewelry box twice. <laughs> Do I have any other? Uh... No, CJ's jumping in and going with her. Amy says the planter. Oh, hi, Amy. I didn't say hello to you yet. Lynn says the home coat angels. We got three for the jewelry box so far, though. If I don't sell it here in my five item sale, I will add um, the other things tomorrow night. So you can find them tomorrow night. And just a reminder for anybody popping in tomorrow night's live sale, I have a special guest. And it's Jan from Antiques from Karen. And uh, she's bringing some amazing stuff, I'm sure. Uh, if you've not watched her, Jan inherited a hoarder's house. Um, her mom was a hoarder. And she's on an amazing journey to just discover all this stuff in this house that she's inherited. And I find it very fascinating. And it's very, it's unique because it's coming from the vantage point of somebody who has lived it. Um, yeah, so those of you that watch, um, many of you may watch Curiosity Incorporated, and I think that's kind of where she got the push to do um, the, um, the channel. And so she's showing all these things that she's going through and she has lots of stuff and she's, you know, selling stuff. She's selling on eBay. She's going to start doing live sales. So I think this is going to be her first uh, venture into doing live sales. All right. So planter, planter, that's two, three planters. And we've got, sure, I can't even one, two, Oh, we got three planners and just two. If we don't count Sharon twice, two for the jewelry box. <laughs> well, Sharon, if the um, if the jewelry box is not this morning, it'll be tomorrow night because it looks like. Oh, Mary Jo says angels, so I've got. Two for angels. I still have three for the planter. Let's make sure they're um, different people. Okay, we got Amy, Sonia, Stephanie. Well, Lynn says the jewelry box. Are we on the jewelry box here? One. Well, you guys, this is hard to keep track. <laughs> Two. Three. Oh, it is a tie for the planter and the jewelry box. Maybe I have to do them both. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a bonus. How about that? We'll do a bonus. We'll have six items today. We'll make you both happy. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I know I'm a couple minutes early, but I didn't like publish my time schedule. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's start. Let's start with the planter. So you've already seen her. I've showed you this gorgeous, gorgeous planter. Like I said, she's dirty, needs to be cleaned up, but I think she's in excellent condition other than the dirt. Um, you know, but, but when, when they're not cleaned up ahead of time, you always have to just keep in the back of your mind that there may be some dirt or whatever that may not completely come off. Just keep that in mind. I always feel bad if I try to clean it up and then it still shows some of this dirt if you thought that it would all come off because it might not. Just saying. Um, but usually all that stuff in the bottom that comes out pretty good, pretty well. Anyway. All right. So she is going to be $18 and she is number – oh, she's not a number. She's a letter. D. Letter D. So if you would like her, pop letter D into the comments, and I'm going to put my email address there. Most of you I know um, she may go in tomorrow night's sale too. <laughs> Nobody's interested. Oh, there's Simon. All right, Simon says, let's make a deal. It is yours. Letter D. Thank you. Let me write that down. 
it's so funny. I always, I, I try to tell my, I'm just going on about my last seal here. So um, I always try to remind myself to write these things down. And I thought I had done really well last time until I went to started writing everything up and realized that I missed some. And then I have to rewatch the video. Fortunately, I was so busy that it took a while before the video was posted. And so the comments were there. That's crazy. Okay, so see, just now I did it again. So I wrote down the name of the item and everything, but I did not write down who got it. And Simon says, I have seen you numerous times around, but I'm not sure that you've purchased from me before. If you have not, please do make sure that you send um, your information to my email address there. And if you've pre-registered in the past, I don't remember. So I apologize for that. And I'm just not quite set up right now to go looking. <laughs> Gordon Rats. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was a cool, cool piece. All right. So let me go and I'm going to grab something else. I have this beautiful, I picked things today for their spring-like appeal since it's so beautiful and most places are, are you know, getting spring-like weather. This is a beautiful tomato wear piece. It's made in Italy. It's in excellent condition, albeit a little dusty. It's, it was made in Italy. It was made for Pier 1 imports, though, if you see it down at the bottom. So I'm not, and I'm not quite sure of the age, and here's why. It could be older. It could be vintage. I don't know how long Pier 1 has been around, but I say that because most of the newer items from Pier 1 had their logo on it. Um, thank you, Simon Says. Um, so I'm thinking that this could be an older piece, but it's not, you know, I don't think it's not from the 70s or 60s, which is my usual um, time frame. But it's very nice. I mean, it's really cute for for springtime and summer. It's in excellent condition. There's nothing at all wrong with this piece. Anyway, this is $8. And it is number, letter. <laughs> it, it is letter. Well, that's, I don't want to do that one. I say that because I don't like to go in my order. Okay. <laughs> $8, letter J. $8, letter J for the tomato wear pitcher. This look really cute for your summertime table. You even use this as a as a vase, right? Wouldn't that be pretty on your table? I love the red color. It's so bright and vibrant. All right. All right. Now speaking of Karina from Tarnished Treasures. Another thing that she's got me all gaga over. Yeah, Mary Jo, it is. They, they call it the tomato. There's tomato wear. There's um, there's a couple others that they do. But yeah, tomato wear is a weird thing. Who, I mean, a, a thing. Who knew, right? Who knew? It's funny. Lots of tomato stuff. I don't think they call strawberry stuff strawberry wear, but tomato wear. Yeah, they do call it that. Um, the next thing I was talking about, Karina again, she's gotten me all into uh, jewelry caskets. I've probably seen them a hundred times and never really noticed them, but she actually collects them and has shown her collection on her channel. Very cool. Some of them are from like they're really old, like antiques old, and then there were a lot that were made in. Japan, so they would have been made, you know, between the 40s and the 70s-ish. Ish. I think they're still making them, but I have one that is just stunningly beautiful. Look at this jewelry casket. Look at the detail on this, and it's got the blue color. This is just fabulous and it's footed but I've not seen one and I, I've been noticing them now because of her I have not seen one with this raised lid like this and it has this decorative element right here in the middle I mean it's just it's so stunning but wait wait 
Look at the detail on the bottom of that sucker. Isn't that cool? Hey, Julie, good morning. I love it. Now, a lot of them are lined, and this one may have originally been lined, like with velvet or whatever, um, but it is not now, but it's still gorgeous. Oh, and I have to tell you, I almost forgot about it. It is repaired, <laughs> and I love how they repaired it. <laughs> Can you see? They've got, and all that is is that the hinge, the metal thing that goes through the hinge has been replaced with the bobby pin. But seriously, all you guys have to do is get some um, wire, you know, even from the craft store, just put it in there and, um, you know, it's fixed right up. Or you can leave the bobby pin in there because it tells a story. <laughs> Love it. Anyway, so this gorgeous jewelry casket, this one is $18. And it is going to be, I'll tell you the letter in a second. I'm going to tell you how big it is. It is one of the bigger ones. I do have some from my haul this past weekend to share with you. They're much smaller. This one is four inches long. And it is from top to bottom about three and a half inches tall. It is one of the bigger ones. So stunningly gorgeous. So like I said, it is $18. And it is letter C. $18 letter C for our blue jewelry casket. Stunning. All right, Simon. Simon says, thank you. You got it. I'm picking up some fun stuff today. All right, and let me tell you that um, those of you that are purchasing from me this morning, well, <laughs> a second. I may get your invoices out to you today because there's just a few of them, but I was going to say that they might have rolled into the invoicing from my sale tomorrow night. They will definitely be rolling into the shipping, um, depending on how fast you well. I don't know. I have stuff still going out from last week, so I might be able to get it out real quick, depending on how quick you get your money to me. Um, it may go out in the next day or so. So that would be awesome. Um, just looking to see if I missed anything. All right. So we got that. All right. We're going to do our cute little jewelry box. This is the next one. You guys already saw it. And you know, it's, you know, it's, it's vintage. It's got some scuff marks on it and everything. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm going to leave the cleaning to whoever picks it up because I just would rather do it. It's not that dirty, but it does have a little bit of a watermark on the outside here, just so you can tell. Um, actually, all the way around the bottom, but I don't see that damage on the inside. It is localized to the outside, even though the inside shows a little bit of wear, but it's beautiful. It's in really nice condition. It's so gorgeous. Anyway, this is going to be $8. And it is not letter, I'm so used to saying number, $8, and it is letter H. $8, letter H for our little jewelry box. It's the only thing I can do before coffee. <laughs> Sharon, I'm glad you got it. You, it's yours. All right. And hey, Sharon, since I haven't shipped your stuff from last week, I'm going to try to see if I can include this in there, save you some shipping. Um, so I'm just, if that's okay with you, otherwise I can ship your, your other stuff right away. I still might be able to, we'll, we'll see how I can finagle that. <laughs> All right. Otherwise, I can just hang on to it for tomorrow night's sale, and then we don't have to worry about it. Can I do that? Are you going to come to tomorrow night's sale? Maybe I'll hang on to that till tomorrow and then figure it in with all of that. Let me know. That would probably be easier. Um, and any of the rest of you, I don't know. Um, who is that? Simon says, if you plan on going to my sale tomorrow night, I can hold off on this until Thursday's invoicing as well, if you'd rather, so I can combine stuff. Always a possibility. That's definitely, <laughs> you guys are funny. 
All right, so let me get on to some of the other stuff. I have a beautiful piece. How many is that? One, two, three, four. Oh, and I was going to do a bonus. So I've got two more. Um, I have a gorgeous piece of uranium glass. And it's not marked, but my research shows that this is Fenton. It's a beautiful bowl. It has these lovely um, swans or geese. I think they're swans. Can you see the head there? Gorgeous. Um, but yeah, my research shows that this is Fenton, so I'm believing that it is. It does have, it does not have any chips or cracks in it, but it has a manufacturer. I'm trying to see if there was more than one. It has a manufacturing um, defect in it. Right here, this looks like a crack. It is not a crack. It is smooth on all sides just so you're aware of that. But isn't this awesome? Look, look at how it glows. Simon says, was that a yes to me holding your stuff until after tomorrow night sale? <laughs> Sometimes I get lost in my own commentary and what everybody's saying. So anyway, so this lovely uranium dish by Fenton. Oh, there's two of those little, by the way. I knew there was a second one. Again, they are not chips or cracks. They're just little manufacturer flaws um, because they're, you, I mean, they're smooth. So anyway, there's two small ones there. Um, anyway, it is approximately seven and a half inches long. Okay, Simon says I will. And it is three and three quarters inches tall. And there's part of their seam that they didn't file down real well either. Interesting. So fun, interesting story about Fenton. My dad used to work for Fenton when he was a boy. And um, I've been to the Fenton factory. It's now closed. But I've been there and toured it and seen their workshop and um, not your shop, gift shop and everything. So a piece like this would not have been um, at the top of the line, okay, because of the flaws. And they would have, they would have marked it. <laughs> Those were the pieces my, my family usually bought. <laughs> but anyway, vintage. And I don't think that that really matters a whole lot to vintage collectors. The flaws, depends on what they are, I guess. I don't know. As opposed to it being damaged. So anyway, this Fenton dish is $15. And it is number, letter, it is letter B. The, fifth, the Fenton Swan Uranium Glass Dish, $15, letter B. One more look at its pretty glow. Oh, we got two. Hey, Carrie, I didn't see you sneak in. And Carrie, you got it. And Carrie, I'm, I'm going to assume, um, say yes or no, that I'll hold on to this for invoicing until after tomorrow night sale because you usually do come. Let me know. All right, Carrie Ann. All right, three, four, five. Okay, we got one more. Let's do, I'm going to do this beautiful, okay, Fitz and Floyd Swan. It is absolutely gorgeous. It has such a lovely satin finish on it, and it's an excellent like almost new condition. It's very clean inside. Oh, Carrie, good. I'm, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you love it. That was really cool. It was different. I've not seen any of them like that in the wild anyway. So on the bottom there, you see the Fitz and Floyd mark. But very, very good condition. Well, 
it's an excellent condition. Like I just said, it's like almost new condition. There's no crazing. There's no chips. There's no cracks. There's no flaws. There's no nothing. It's great. This beautiful swan planter is $10 and it is letter G. Swan planter letter G, $10. Yep, that is a planter. See? But as with all planters, you can use it for all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can put it on your desk and put your pencils and stuff in it. You could, you know, add a little um, little flower frog in there and put some flower. Wouldn't that be pretty for your springtime decor with a little flower frog in there and some flowers? That would be really cool. It's very pretty. All right, that does it for today's little five offering, which actually turned out to be six. <laughs> um, I'm going to go back into the uh, stuff that I'm sharing for the haul. And I may show those two later on. We'll see before I'm done. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Put that there. Alrighty, so going back to the stuff from that estate sale, I showed you those. All right, so in, in the basement where I got the fun um, ornaments, I saw this tucked in there, and of course I grabbed that out real quick. It's made in Japan, little felt ornament. Let me see a little Japan sticker there. It's got little beads on there. I'm almost betting, I don't know for certain, that those are little mercury beads. Just decorating with the little sequins and the packages on top. Really, really cute. The um, ornament hanger, the original one has broken. That's why they put the hanger there, but very cute. Oh, I'm going to show you this. This one I'm really excited about. I adore Joseph Originals, and I've gotten quite the eye for them. I found one. You guys may have seen it. Yeah, I did do the, you've seen that video. Um, I was at an antique store, and, oh, yeah, I even sold it at my last sale. <laughs> Get with the day. Um, I, I zoomed right in and found this um, Joseph Originals piece that wasn't marked, and it wasn't signed. Hi, Max. Um, and knew immediately that it was Joseph Originals picked it up. So this one's actually marked, so I didn't have to use my skill. But look at her. Now, she is dirty. She has some stuff going on. There are no chips or cracks. She does not appear to have been repaired. Don't even think there's any crazing. But she has something on her hand, and I'm, I have not tried to clean anything up. Like I said, I don't want to do it here at the studio because I did break that item in the sink. So... I'm going to wait until I have an opportunity to do it at home. And she has more of those marks from that discolor. Uh, and it's something. It's on top. It's surface dirt. So we'll see. Now, she is missing her metal, uh, and I believe it was metal, thing for her parasol. But other than that, she's in excellent condition. She has the black eyes, which indicate that she's an older Joseph Originals. So she's signed on the bottom. She's dirty on the bottom. I don't care about that at all because that's on the bottom. Um, but she's signed right there. You can tell. She's signed there. And she has her tag. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this one is not going to be for sale for a while. And we will see whether or not it's going to be for sale on my live sale or <clears throat> whether I will put it on eBay at some point because some of these Joseph Originals pieces can go for big money. And as of yet, even when I do offer ups, um, some of my pieces don't quite get up into the level that they can um, earn on eBay. So we'll see. But isn't she wonderful? I was so glad that she was there still. Gorgeous. And then I also picked up. <laughs> these were right near. They were right near. Um, 
that Joseph Originals piece. <laughs> so funny. I've since looked these up and um, there's a following for these kind of things. This is that shell art, but look at these little frogs. They're in a band. They're so fun. And this would have been, I'm assuming, a souvenir piece from, you know, somewhere on the beach. Um, but I do believe that they are vintage. Look, they've got their little drumsticks. They're like all, you know, hanging out, ready to play. This one's in excellent, yeah, it's adorable. It's in excellent condition. I don't see, I've, I've gotten these before where I can tell that there was some other item that was missing. I don't think anything's missing from this. Nothing's broken. He, it's in good, good shape. I like it. It's really cute. And, and when you can find these, these are actually nice things to have. Other than the girls, and I've had one of them before, the, the shell girls, um, with the like the chenille arms and whatever those sell in uh, upwards of 30 maybe even more depending on the condition those are really highly sought after with the bonnets these are fun but they're a nice price point for the beginning collector because for instance this one sells probably right around ten dollars so yeah really cute cute item fun little collection to get into all right so <laughs> We're talking about Karina and her jewelry caskets. I found, and I mentioned this earlier. Oh, <laughs> well, good luck with that, Sharon. Hopefully it's not too crazy. I had to go do a car title, something or another. <clears throat> not tag, but they were, um, this was probably in the fall. They had people lining up outside and took their numbers and everybody waited outside, which actually was kind of nice. And then I went twice. On a nice day, they were outside. And on, on the not so nice day, they had just a few people that were allowed in the building. So hopefully, hopefully you find that it's not too bad. There were lots of people there. It's just they weren't all bunched together. So Karina, jewelry, jewelry caskets. These are little ones. Look at this little guy. This is really cute. This one does have a mark on the bottom. Let's see if I can make it out. Oh, maybe that's not a mark. That's a mark. I see it. Made in Japan. So this is a made in Japan jewelry casket. It's lined. Very cool. Nice shape. The lining is in excellent condition. Sometimes they're pulled away a little bit. This one is not. It's it's a little guy. Its diameter is probably two and a half inches. Yeah, about two and a half inches across. And then here's this one. And this one has a really fun little grape pattern on it. If it'll focus. Really cute. This one's foot. Well, the other one was footed too. I really like the footed ones. I think that really adds to their elegance. But it has that great pattern all the way around the outside. It's also made in Japan. This one was a little bit easier to see down at the bottom. And the only, well, there might be just a hair of tarnishing. And this, these are not precious metal. Um, but sometimes the metal, it does, you know, it tarnishes with age just a little bit, enough to give it some character. And the only major thing is it's on the bottom, which is always fun. This one has a really nice little red lining to it as well. And the lining is in excellent condition. This one is, hmm, it's about three and a quarter inches long. So, yeah, much smaller than the other one. I'll show you the difference of this nice big one. See the difference in size? But still nice, fun to have anyway. All right, I showed all of those. I showed that, let's show this. I touched the music box. <laughs> all right, this guy needs to be cleaned up. 
but look at him. It's this little dog. It's like a little Scotty dog, although he's yellow. Maybe he's a Westie. Who knows? But he's that kind of dog. And he's looking in a thing of books. So he's a planter. The inside of the planter, like I said, is a little dirty. And he does have, I can't tell. Let me put on my glasses. Maybe that will help me tell. I think, I don't think that these are color loss. I think there's something on top. Oh, it comes off. Okay, it can be scratched off. I thought that that was paint loss until I looked at it. Can you see it right there? Until I looked at it closer. That actually scrapes off. And there's another piece of it on his nose. So he could probably be um, cleaned up real nice. I think those are surface things. And there's a little, this I think is under the glaze. This little dark patch is under the glaze on his paw. I think. But anyway, isn't that adorable? Look at him. He's so cute. So cute. He is about, oh, uh, let's say four and three quarters inches tall. Adorable little guy. Cute. He'll be for sale. Most of this stuff, I think, unless I tell you otherwise, is for sale. Um, I loved, I love the graphics on this. Look at this little jar. This is, and it has the bottle in it as well. This was shoe polish, white shoe polish. But look at, look at even this bottle. Look, I just love the graphics with the crown. Look at that. And it is an orange color, so it's orange and black. So this would be something that would be really cute for your um, Halloween display. Just beautiful. And it was sold at Fafli. It has a metal lid. This is a like a cardboard tube. Metal lid. And it was sold at Faflic Shoes for 69 cents back. Back when it was originally sold. There's a little oxidation on the bottom um, metal piece. But, but the graphics, this part that you see is in excellent condition. I'm a little scuffed there, but. Really nice, very nice piece. I was happy to have that. All right, so I got several of these things. I love the sayings on these things. <laughs> these are those metal trivets, and these were hanging on the wall in the house. I had, they actually had to get them down for me. Um, this is copyright M-A-F, W-A-F, I don't know. Let's see what it says. I don't think it matters. It is metal. W, W-A-F, whatever W-A-F stands for. But there are other things in life besides money, hunger, misery, and poverty. <laughs> so, yeah, it's so bright and cheery. Anyway, it's cute. Little metal trivet. This one, there's one D from the Thrill of the Thrift has one hanging on her wall. And I, when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I had that when I was a kid. And I had to go, and I finally found one. So I have one that I kept. It says, um, come in, sit down, relax. Maybe it says converse. Our house didn't, doesn't always look like this. Sometimes it's even worse. <laughs> I, just, I kept that for me. Anyway, this one's very similar. Our house is clean enough to be healthy and dirty enough to be happy. I thought that was cute. That's also WAF. That one's easier to see on the back. <laughs> like this thing. <sighs> Kitchen clothes on account of illness. I'm sick of cooking. That's me on any given day. Um, this was from the quilt shop in Berlin, Ohio. Actually, they call it Berlin, 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 Ohio. But that's cute. It's an Amish area down in Berlin. Yeah, that's cute. And then this one's a bit heavier. I like this metal trivet. You sit your, you know, keep stuff off of your counters and whatever. This one's really cute. Look at all the colors in that one and the hearts. Really pretty. Nice condition, too. Very fun. So pick those up.
All right. All right. I showed you all of that. All right. I'm going to show you. I have a big piece, and I'm going to show you that now so that I don't forget to show you. Look what I found. These scotch things are, like, really collectible right now, and this is huge. It's heavy, too. It does have a little bit of a dent right there, and it has some oxidation on the bottom. And that's the way bottom. And I have no idea what this is for. It doesn't appear to be broken. I don't know what it's for. It has this little plastic pop-up thing that goes right there. But this comes off. And it's got glass inside that appears to be intact. Again, it's got dirt all over me again. I haven't cleaned anything up. And... Um, I haven't really, because, oh, maybe it is cracked. Let's see. I don't feel a crack. I don't know what that's from. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to clean that up, see what that's. I haven't done any research on that at all. I just know that this is very collectible. Oh, my gosh, I've got that dirt all over me now. All over me. the hazards of these live live shows <laughs> if I was going to do this in a recorded video I could you know cut all that out <laughs> all right the next thing that I got and I think it's the last thing that I'm showing you for today I got in the basement of this one estate sale and I love these things I got this old falling apart book school history of the United States and it is I don't need to cover this I think that's all I have to cover but look at the writing inside when my sister and I were going through the estate my parents estate we went nuts over the books that had all the writing in it from our our relatives our ancestors that we didn't even know so cool so there are dates in here from 04, lots of dates from 04, um, but the book itself, 04 being 1904, is copyright in the 1800s, but I'm going to get there and see precisely, yeah, 1897 by the American Book Company, and like I said, it is it is falling apart. There are pages coming out of this baby, um, falling apart, torn. And I've told you before how I like to find books like this because then I'm not, I don't feel as guilty about using them in art, but I will tell you, this is probably not going to get used in art because it's intact enough that it's still readable. And it has the most amazing so amazing. Hold on. I'm trying to find one. This person who owned this book doodled all over the place. They drew a box around that um, thing. But it has, oh, wow. Oh, this map is, I don't, okay, this would have been what it was. All right, it's a history book. So this is what it was. This map is from 1826. It says 50 years after independence. But look at California. Look at Mexico. Look at that. Isn't that neat? I just love seeing that. But look at all the doodles. I mean, but that's why I probably won't use this in, in art because I think that this has just value all by itself. And value in this, I like to, and I don't have a whole lot of time to spend doing it, but I love to read history books from back in the day because they talk about things that our current history books don't. Um, for instance, the, like some of the battles and things, the lesser battles, back then they were closer to them in time and they didn't have World War I and II, um, you know, the, the Vietnam War, they didn't have these major things that they had to include. So what they spent their time on was different. And also when, when it comes to history, the closer 
to an event that you find history, the better, um, more trustworthy the information. I'm trying to figure out how to actually say that, but <laughs> look at this fine even fauna. But I love this. So yeah, that was very cool. I was happy to find that. Then this one, oh my gosh. Now this one I don't know. I might use it. We'll see. Look at the cover. The cover is just, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. But it is Nixie Bunny in Manners Land. And you can barely see the outline of the bunny right there. Do I have a channel? Yeah, Mamie's Treasure Cottage. You're on my channel. <laughs> you're actually on my channel. I'm not sure how, depending on what device you're watching on, you'll, you should see my name and channel name there. So, yeah, I would love it if you guys would give me a thumbs up. And um, also, if you're not subscribed, if you would subscribe. But look at that. Oh, if you're talking about my art channel... Maybe you're talking. To, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You weren't talking to me, Belinda. Talk before you know what's going on. <laughs> Don't talk before you know what's going on. Anyway, never mind. Oh, cool, Sharon. Reading about your your stamp album. Very cool. <laughs> sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> Jumping into conversations I am not part of. Oh, but look at that. Oh, look at that. Isn't that awesome? I'm trying to find it because there's illustrations in here. Oh, and I love when I find this. I call these inclusions in the book. And these inclusions can tell stories, too. I think that's from, um, from a, another book. But look, and this one, it's falling apart. The pages are torn out. But look at the, the little bunny butt. Oh, my gosh. So this is awesome. Little music on that page. Uh, here's another beautiful illustration. The book is, is falling apart. Pages are coming out. Um, torn pages, drawing in the pages. This is not a bibliophile's dream. Look at the body. That's my dream. Oh, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. All right. So this one is copyright 1912 by Joseph C. Sindelar. So awesome book. Happy to have that. Really happy. Yeah, it's cool. All right. This one I picked up because I'm going to toss this in my um, Memorial Day in July 4th um, decor. She, apparently the person who lived here was a school teacher because I have some other school teacher type things, but this was a catalog of things that they could purchase for use in their classroom. And it is from 1944. So yeah, that's cool. Now this one, I've actually since looked up online how to um, kill mold and mildew and stuff off of books. Because this, that white stuff, I'm pretty sure, is some sort of a moldy thing. And it came from a damp basement. But I'm going to do that. This one will eventually be for sale. Your Wonderful World of Science. Look at the illustration. Isn't that cool? Look at these illustrations. And by the way, I did, I looked it up and I discovered they said to use a uh, damp cloth with denatured alcohol on it. Um, and that that, because I guess that it, that's not a very wet thing and it evaporates quickly and it should protect the, um, the thing. There, oddly enough, there's no watermarks on the inside of this. So whatever that was, was just probably from moisture in the air. And it should clean up really nicely. But I just thought that this was beautiful. This is a beautiful book. This is a, hey, Nancy. This is a nice condition. It is, you know, because it was damp. So it has a little bit of a, a bend to it. But nice, nice book. And what did I tell you the date? I think it was 1950 something.
1957. This one I have to clean up. I don't, I don't know what this is on the edge of this book. Look at that. It could be, it could be um, mold, but it seems like it might have been a wet substance. Um, yeah, I heard that, um, Nancy. So we're going to give that a try and then um, seal it up in some baking soda or something to get the smell out. But this, again, this is another, this is our country's story. So it's an early history book. This was a history book that would have been used in school. This, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm betting it's from the 60s. Yep. 1961. So, yeah. Adventures in a New World, Discovery and Exploration. Columbus Finds a New World. Yeah, so I love all these early history books. Um, this one I may hang on to, actually. I may hang on to this one. Well, the other one, too. But sometimes when they're newer, I, I will sell them on. But this one I won't. It has had some water moisture. I don't see any, like, visible water damage. But obviously it has expanded a little bit in, in um, size. But the, the thing that is the most noticeable is whatever that is on the top. So, like I said, she was a school teacher. So here's a magazine. From the 1912, well, 1912, from, the, from 1912, for school teachers, primary education, it's called. Look at the back. I don't have a cover. And she's actually taped back in this little piece right there, which is kind of cool. But the fonts are always so much fun to look at in these old things. Oh, wow, Nancy. I am not a night owl. That's why... That's why you don't really see me at your sales, because I am not, I cannot stay up that late at all. I'm falling asleep by 10. Sometimes I try to stay up for um, flipping and sipping, which is Fat Bird Finds, and I'm representing today, by the way, I my Fat Bird Finds shirt. <laughs> but I try to stay up for flipping and sipping, because it's a lot of fun. That's Friday nights at 10, um, but it's very, I mean, I'm usually in bed watching it. And if I can stay awake for, you know, to 1030, it's shocking. Anyway, this is very cool. I love this. Look at the illustrations here. Look at this. Very, very cool. Love that. Love that. So got that. This I saw and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Because Victory Garden V for victory, look at that. And I thought, in my limited, you know, historical knowledge, I thought that that was from World War II, Victory Gardens. But then I looked at the copyright date on this. It's copyright from the Ohio State University. And it is copyright... Um, 1914. So that would have been obviously around the um, First World War. But look at these anthropomorphic vegetables. I'm in the wrong place. There we go. And down here. Isn't that cool? I just think that's so cool. Anyway, so pick that up. Picked up some sheet music because of, again, the illustrations. Look at this. Christmas songs. For children. Look, I mean, just look at the illustrations in this. So cool. It's Santa and the reindeer on the back. Awesome. And look at this precious little girl sneaking down the stairs. Look at that. Sneaking down the stairs to the fireplace. So cool. And then there's Santa on the back. Oh. Look at the look. Isn't that amazing? I, I, 
speaking of fat bird finds, this is like their colorway. <laughs> this whole thing is an orange and blue. It may get tucked away to, to send off because it's fun. Cool. And then Christmas songs for the kitties. This one has the same back to it with Santa, just in a different colorway. So this is red and green. Northwestern Telephone Company put this out. There's a little stamp of theirs on the back. Cool. Awesome. And then here's some more of those primary education ones. This one is from 1917. Oh, my gosh. Look at the dental cream. Is that Colgate? Colgate's dental cream on the bottom. Cool. Yeah, the Victory Garden thing is cool. And, and like I said, I but I always thought that they were from the Second World War. But, uh, you know, obviously they knew it from then, too. Good morning, Gretchen. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I just love that. Cool. But this this is a is a magazine for educators, so they have all these things in there that educators can use in their classrooms. 1917. Wow, I my grandmother, who had a sixth grade education, was a school teacher. That always astonishes me. Look, look at all the kids lined up for their school play or whatever. Isn't that fun? Oh, my Lord. Too cute. So I had to have that. Here's another one. It has somebody's 1916. And then we got the Colgate thing on the back. I'm going to cover that up a little bit. It's an old address. Look at that. Dental hygiene all over the country. Dental cream. So toothpaste used to be dental cream. But these are in nice condition. Um, there's a little bit of watermarking on them, but they're in nice condition. I like to use these things, by the way, in my art. And um, I don't really feel too bad about them, these types of things. Books I do. Oh, look at this. But we'll see. If I feel that I can make enough money off of it, selling it outright, oh, I won't. Yeah. Yes. Look at that for Valentine's Day. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I didn't really look January, February, February, March. I'm not going to show all these to you. January, April, March. I think I got all of them that were there March. But here's a good tip for you guys. These types of things, if you find stuff like this, like you just saw um, that had the really cool thing for Valentine's Day, you take a look and see if you find October because you might just find vintage Halloween. Look at the ad on the back of this one. This is a different one, so I'll show you the school century 1916. Let's see what's going on on the inside of here. More activities like the other one. This one isn't as exciting to look at as the other one. The other one was a little bit more um, pretty. Here's some ads I can show you. Ad page. Well, hey, Jan. Don't drive and watch. Don't tell me that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I told everybody at the beginning. So uh, Jan is here from Antiques and Karen, everybody. And uh, she's my guest tomorrow night on my channel for my live sale. So you'll have to check out her channel and check out the sale. Oh, here's another one. I like this one the best. This primary education one. It has the coolest um, pictures and stuff in it. But I got several of those, I told you. Oh, March. I was going to look and see if there was anything St. Patrick's Day in this March one. Hmm. 
I've got some bunnies, some geese. These are just awesome. I'm so happy to have these fun. It is fun, Gretchen, to have a guest. Um, I did it one other time with Katie. Um, I did it with her right before I was doing my um, open house here because I knew I wasn't going to have enough time to do a full sale, package everything up and whatever. Oh, don't be nervous, Jan. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so oh, this one has a little bit of water damage. March, I didn't see anything. St. Patrick's Day. Um, and yeah, it was so much fun. I'm like, well, we got to figure out when I can do it with Karen. I didn't have a really good time to do it. So I'm just like, we'll do it now. This, look at this book. Good morning, Angela. This is beautiful. Gateway to Storyland. It's in nice condition, this book is. Look at the illustrations on the end papers. Look at that. So this is going to be in beautiful color. This is from Platt and Monk. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at the illustration. Can you see it? I love it. Anyway, Platt and Monk Company. We've never heard of that. Okay, this is in Roman numerals, but I think I've got it down. The latest copyright is MCM LII, which I think is 1900. MCM is 1900. LII would be 52, if I'm not um, wrong about that. But so stinking cute. It's got the tail of Peter Rabbit in there with some awesome illustrations. <laughs> oh, my Lord. The illustrations in this are fabulous. This, oh, I did find a, one little page that had some crayon on it, but oh my lord, look at this. This is going to be for sale eventually. Um, I don't know if I'll do it tomorrow night or not. I like to see if there's any pictures in, that I have to have. Oh, look at this. What is this? This is the gingerbread boy. Definitely doesn't look like a gingerbread cookie in this one. In the Newer versions, he definitely looks more like a gingerbread cookie. There she's making him. But then he becomes more uh, anthropomorphic after that. But, yeah, awesome. But, yeah, I love the illustrations. This is awesome, awesome, awesome book. Um, and then I have some jewelry pieces that I picked up. I don't usually pick up jewelry items. But um, it was the last day, and I was I might have dirt on my face. And I was getting, I was getting some good deals, so I picked it up. This beautiful brooch is Weiss. This is awesome. This will go in a sale. I'm definitely going to sell that. Maybe even as early as tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see. I have some stuff behind me. I'm going to show you that's going to go into the sale tomorrow. Um. This one I think is going to stay with me. I love this one. It's a rhinestone pin in a teardrop shape. Actually, I've got it probably on wrong because it probably hangs like this. Isn't it awesome? So beautiful. Angela, I'm out of the loop. I hope your mom is all right. And when I say I'm out of the loop, sometimes then I think, oh, did I see that somewhere and comment in a chat? Because I just don't have the memory of a... Um, memory is not real good, especially if it's out of context. But so I hope everything's okay with your mom. And then I got this one. And this one is going to need some repairs. Do I ever make art? Yes, I do. I do. Um, actually, on my art channel, I think there's some. Uh, I used it in my fabric journals. I like the bling. I've used them in, um, I made some art out of paintbrushes. I used jewelry pieces in that. But pick this up. I don't know if it'll focus. But it's a Christmas tree with candles along the outside edge. And this is signed. It's by Pakula. 
it's missing two rhinestones, one right there and one right there. And I'm likely, I say likely because, you know, I am, I do have problems, especially with Christmas uh, jewelry. I love Christmas jewelry, but it's likely going to go into a sale at some, or not into a sale, but be sold at some point in time probably on eBay, but if I can find adequate replacements for those things, I will sell it that way on eBay because this sells in the upper 30s, this pin here, so that's probably how I'm going to sell that. Anyway, so, yeah, I have, you know what I used one time, um, Gretchen, if you look, here, I'm going to show you guys all my art channel banner, bam. Um, I have a journal that I made, and I'm trying to think. I think, actually, it may be more than one, but I think it was my St. Patrick's Day journal that I'm thinking of that I used a uh, vintage earring as the closure. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you'll have to check that out over there. Um, and for those of you that, you know, um, are interested, I always put in my regular uploaded videos my links to my uh, other channel, my art channel, and um, my Instagram and all that kind of stuff. So if you want an actual link, you can go to one of my um, non-live videos and find the link. But that's my other channel. So you have to, if you're interested in that, you can check that out. Yeah, I like shiny stuff. I think I, you know, I had a friend who said that she was a crow in a former life. <laughs> I thought, I don't, don't. Don't believe that. I think she was joking too, but I, oh boy, I can totally feel the sentiment of that because I am really attracted to shiny things. All right, I'm going to show you some stuff that I'm going to have in my sale tomorrow. So you may have seen me haul these, these lovely little um, skunk eyes with the shiny eyes. The gem eyes, these are adorable. They are milk glass, painted milk glass. They do have their stoppers. I'm going to go through these kind of quick because I'm going to show them again tomorrow. And I showed them once before. <laughs> so I'm going to go through them quick. This beautiful head vase is going to be an offer item tomorrow night. Isn't she lovely? She's gorgeous. She's in excellent condition. She does have just a little bit of paint chipped off right there, but really nice. This lovely wall hanging. It's a painting. It's, it's an artist signed painting. Um, so that's cool. It's beautiful. And, and I love the colors on that. I think that's awesome. I love the contrast in the colors. You may have seen me haul these. These are definitely mid-century. Don't they scream mid-century to you? These horror, there's a set of two of them. And yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I'm gonna sell them, whether I'm gonna sell them together or not, because sometimes <laughs> I've mentioned before, people get to a certain price point and then they're not happy paying more than that. And I think that they're worth more. So I may sell them individually. But we'll see. We'll see. I still have amazing dog figurines. This guy, I think he's a, is he a boxer? I think he's a boxer. Gorgeous little dog figurine. It's made in Japan. I have a fairy lamp. It's been a while since I've had a fairy lamp. You guys saw, the, saw this hauled probably. But look at how gorgeous this one is satin glass with the beautiful um, applied flowers. I keep looking because the stems on these always make me look like they're like I'm missing a crack, but it's the stem. There's like a, that's a very light silvery color on the stems. Excellent condition. This little fairy lamp, that'll be an offer item. I have these left and kitty cats which will be sold separately. I got a big one. Look at her pretty eyes. And the slightly smaller one. They're beautiful. I 
I love her. I was thinking spring when I picked her out for tomorrow. She's so cute with her flowers. Little lady. She's cute. These awesome bird salt and pepper shakers will be in tomorrow night's sale as well. Aren't they amazing? They're so cool. Um, does this one have a stopper? I think one one has its cork stopper, the other one does not. And they are Inesco. They both have their Inesco labels on them. Yeah, these are awesome. I have this gorgeous swan planter. I love this. This is very vintage. Made in Japan. Like the little foot underneath there. Excellent condition, but I don't know, I, if you guys have seen my haul, you know that I've talked about this. There's nothing broken, but there's a little, a little, you see how it just from manufacturer from the way it was molded, there's a space back here in the tail, and I there's something in that space. <laughs> And it just gives a little little bit of a clink. So this one has a little story to tell. It has a little bit of crazing on it, which I love. But it's actually, for its age, it's in very beautiful, nice, clean condition. I have her. And then I have this gorgeous vase. And I don't think, that, I'm pretty sure this doesn't qualify. It's not a swung vase because it looks crimped to me. It's definitely crimped. Um, it's got some dust on the inside at the bottom. This is uranium glass. I'm looking for my. I have. Oh, there it is. I have my light here somewhere. This is gorgeous. This is a yellow, yellowish green color. But looky how that glows. You see how beautiful that glow is? It's stunning. You can I don't even know that you can, can see it as bright as it is. It is so bright and beautiful. It's a beautiful, tall. This is dirt that you see on the bottom, but you can kind of see the, the greenish yellow. Look at that. Isn't that fun? That's just really fun. It's tall, nice tall base. Thank you, Gretchen. I think so. Um, 12 inches tall. No chips or cracks. This is a nice piece. Very nice piece. So, and then there'll be more. That's always, you know, I always show just a few of the things that I'm going to pull out. But Jan and I are both going to have 20 items tomorrow. Um, and we'll both have just a, um, like two, I think is what we said offer items um so yeah and, and i think it'll be a lot of fun so anyway that my friends is what i have for you today and um so yeah so let me look back here and make sure i know what's going on i'm going to show you the stuff that didn't sell earlier um so Carrie Ann, Sharon, all three of you, and Simon says, I'm holding until after my sale tomorrow just in case, right? So I'll invoice after that. I should be good this week as far as invoicing goes. I don't have the same kind of craziness happening. I usually try to get my invoices out on Thursdays after my Wednesday live sales because I like them to be quick. And then that way, anybody who's quick on the draw can have their stuff ship on Friday even. I don't ship or work on the weekends. Um, so the next time that would ship would be Monday. Monday and Tuesday um, tends to be when I get that stuff out. Um, yeah, so that was something I learned, by the way, since we're just chit-chatting. I don't have a time agenda. <laughs> um, I, many of you know. Some of you probably don't know. I used to publish a magazine. And I published it from my home. And I did that for 10 years. And I was a workaholic. And in the beginning of that um, publication, I worked around the clock. 
Now, it was nice because I had small children and because I worked from home and for myself, I was able to take my laptop and I could go to dance lessons and, you know, I could be part of their lives, even though I was on the fringe and was working. But I worked so hard and so much, excuse me, so hard and so much that um, they didn't see me a whole lot at home. Like I was there, but I wasn't there, if that makes sense. And you know, when you work for yourself, you don't make as much money as if you, you know, get a salary outside. So I just decided at one point in time that I was going to limit myself. So I made the point that I would not work past six o'clock PM. So I still do that to this day. Um, I'm often leaving here, you know, there have been the rare occasions where I've been here later. Now I do on my, obviously on Wednesday, I work past 6 PM, but I move, I adjust my hours accordingly so that I'm not working too much. And then my weekends are for my family. Um, you know, and again, every once in a while, there's a difference there. But anyway, so I have, for those of you that are coming in now that haven't seen it already, I have this beautiful tomato ware pitcher. It's made in Italy. It's older. I don't know how much older, but it was made for Pier 1. It's pretty. I think it's great for spring. It's $8, and it is letter J, if you're interested. $8, letter J. And then I also have, and this one I love. I love this one. Guys, this is, I don't know if it's just not doing it justice or what, but this is an awesome piece. This is a planter. It's beautiful. It's this beautiful satin glaze on it with this just this lovely uh, muted face here. It's in perfect condition. No chips, no cracks, no crazy, nothing. Um, and it's Fitz and Floyd. And this lovely swan planter is $10. And it is letter G. $10 letter G for our swan planter. So if you're interested in either one of those, Otherwise, that's it. Tired of your job, yeah. Yeah. I was there. When I was teaching, I was counting down the days. <laughs> I was counting down the days. That was a I loved I love teaching, by the way. That's my calling. And I can't wait until I get to the point where I can start teaching again through my other channel. I love it. And I, lo I love teaching adults above all, but I, I love teaching the kids too. It's just the job of public school teaching was challenging. <laughs> challenging at best. And um, it was a lot of work. And I was glad I was out. Um, when I had my first child, I left. Yeah. Wow. Hi, Dean. 24 years. That's a long time. I taught Spanish. <laughs> Would you have guessed that? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It, and it's funny. I'm, I'm kind of a funny person about Spanish language. When I was in college, there was like a big click among the people that did the Spanish um, teaching. And they like to get together and talk Spanish all the time. And I felt it was contrived. I don't know if that makes any sense. I like to practice, but I felt it was contrived because that's not what we would, you know, speak. And um, I'm still funny about that. I love when I run into people that cannot speak English and I'm able to jump in and help them. I love that. But I don't just break into Spanish. Consequently, I don't think my Spanish is up to snuff. I think I have, um, I can still, like every once in a while, I challenge myself to think in Spanish and to talk in Spanish just on my own. But yeah, I'm real funny about that. And I, I, it may be a, um, maybe a pride thing. Pride's the first word that came to mind. It may not be exactly the best definition, but um, because if I'm speaking to somebody who can also speak English, I don't know, I'm more self-conscious. Whereas if I'm speaking to somebody who cannot speak English, I feel less self-conscious because I think that they will, you know, are just happy to communicate. <laughs> Isn't that funny? 
Ah, que bueno, Jan. Um, like I said, it feels contrived to me sometimes when I, I break it out. Although, you know, it's really funny. My um, family went on vacation. Um, in 2008, we went on a cruise and um, my youngest daughter and my husband, we did it this way. We took one shore excursion and we couldn't all agree on the same shore excursion. So my husband and my older daughter did one thing and um, they swam with dolphins and I had already swum with dolphins before they had not. So they did that. And my youngest daughter decided that she wanted to go horseback riding um, in this was in, was it in Cancun? I don't know, somewhere over there. No, Cozumel. I think it was in Cozumel. Anyway, so they knew that I was a Spanish teacher. I had quit by that time, obviously, but they knew it, but they didn't get it. So it was so funny. Her, um, She was eight years old at the time when we took a cab from the port to the horseback riding place. And um, I'm very talkative in a foreign country with cab drivers because I'm sorry, I don't trust them. And I have reason <laughs> from an experience I had when I lived in Spain. So I get in the car and I immediately start, started speaking Spanish to the cab driver so that he was aware that I was aware. And um, Anyway, my daughter just stared at me like as I'm just yakety yak yak yakking with the guy. So that was kind of fun that they got to see that. But I don't do that like in normal. As a matter of fact, my best friend is uh, Puerto Rican and she always tries to practice with me. And uh, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't do it. But anyway, thank you all for coming. I hope you have a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day here in Northeast Ohio. Um, a little cool, cooler than it has been, but it's still gorgeous. It's a nice spring day, and so I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to finish getting my packages ready to ship from last week, and those will go out. And, um, yeah, I'm get ready for my sale tomorrow. So thank you all for coming. I love it, hanging out with you. So, yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow night. Thanks. Bye, everybody.